So I recently came across an AI model builder called Meshi. You can essentially build models through natural language prompts. Here I say make a dragon and look at the result. We have a dragon. Meshi even animates dragons. Check the YouTube description today to find a link to Meshi. Anyhow, back to the video. After finding Meshi, I realized I could now build my own 3D games without having to build the actual models, which has always been the reason why I've avoided building 3D games. So this got me thinking, what games should I create? And I was thinking, when I was a kid, I used to love RuneScape. So we're going to make something like RuneScape in this series, but it's going to be different. Oh. How much is wow? And just a disclaimer, we're in no way affiliated with Jagex or RuneScape whatsoever. And we will not be infringing on any of their copyright or trademarks. So back in the day, I used to use Erlicht Engine for really simple projects. But as I said, because I couldn't make 3D models, I was not able to do much with this because I'm not uh, creative in that sense. I'm a computer programmer, right? So look at the type of games you can make with this engine. They're very simple games. They're designed to be run on older hardware. It's exactly what we need to achieve our task of creating a multiplayer online role-playing game. So we're going to use this engine. The only problem is it only supports certain animated objects, not FBX. So we will need to be converting between different model formats. Something which you'll see in this video caused me a ton of problems and took a lot of time to solve. So after downloading the game engine, I downloaded the FBX models with their animations. Then I imported them into Blender and exported it as a DirectX file. After editing Erlex example file to load our new DirectX file, look at the result was absolutely awful. So this problem was occurring because the exporting process in Blender didn't go as planned when exporting to DirectX. So I needed to find a solution, but for the time being, I just put the whole thing on hold and just focused on the game map. So I went back to Meshi and started generating models for the game map. After downloading the models from Meshi, I imported them into Blender and put them all together, creating a nice mountain and some terrain that Meshi helped me generate. After importing it back into Erlicht and rotating it, you can see it looks very nice, it's textured, and it does look like a snow area. This is where I now decided to think about how I'm going to design the game. After all, Erlicht is only a 3D engine, it's not a game engine exactly. So I started thinking, okay, let's break the game into zones. So the world map is a zone, inside of a castle is a zone, in a market is a zone. And the different zones will basically have different 3D models. And the network will obviously only send player information depending which zone you're in. Okay, so that's the design I've chosen. So after coding, this is how the game started to look. We call new game, which creates a new game, which is basically a shared pointer of the game. And uh, we have the ability to load the game zones. And our game zones get loaded by reading this XML, which specifies where all the game zones are. And then those particular zones state the name of the zone and where the object files can be located. After attaching a first person shooter camera to my Erlicht engine, I then explored my map in a first person view. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. I mean, it's not bad, is it? I mean, Bear in mind, we're supposed to run this game on older hardware, yeah? So it's not too bad. It's pretty nice. So I'm happy with that result so far. With that completed, I decided that we obviously need a tile system in our game uh, that is different from 3D space. So I started implementing the ability to have 2D space in our 3D space, where the height will be calculated automatically based on what objects are beneath you. So we started writing all the code for that, as well as the ability to load uh, 3D models. So I converted the FBX of our player to a .obg because as you know I was having issues animating it with DirectX and uh, yeah when we positioned him in the game his head was sticking out of the snow. Now I swear to you I did not program it to do this it was by chance because the positioning was calculated incorrectly so I thought that was quite funny and I nicknamed the whole application snowman 
as well. Uh, so that's pretty funny. Using Ehrlich's triangle selector, I solved the positioning problem and the height was now calculated correctly. And our player lives in 2D space. However, its 3D height is calculated based on the terrain below it. Obviously, we needed a proper style camera that's a little like RuneScape, so you can tilt left to right, and many other games are like that too. So we implemented that, and this is the result. It turned out very well. You can see we were able to rotate the camera around the player based on its position. That's very nice. So yeah, things got really weird at this point. I was trying to fix the direct X issue that you saw earlier in the video by converting it to a B3D format instead with Blender. And yeah, it stretched him and made him look like a stick man. It took me over a day to figure that out and it was because the exporter plugin I was using was made for a version lower than Blender 3, which is why I think it's 2.8 which is why we were having those problems. So the moment I switched to Blender 2.8, that issue was solved, the plugin worked as expected, but it took me a long time before I figured that out. It took me a whole day or two. So yeah, after finally solving that problem, this is how it looked and it looked pretty damn nice. I decided it would be nice to be able to implement height maps and that's exactly what I did. So essentially it takes a grayscale image and it converts it into a mesh that we can then walk on. So essentially it's a bird's eye view image and the more grayscale pix the pixel is, the higher the snow is, right? And the more black it is, the lower the snow is. And then obviously we get this nice terrain uh, generated just from that JPEG image. Yeah, so previously it was just a white solid color I was thinking why not add some texture textures to the actual uh, height map and that's exactly what I did. So as you can see in those two little images, the top one, the grayscale image, helps generate the height map and the one below it textures it with solid colors. So I was having some issues changing the actual solid colors to be texture. So I went back to Meshi and generated a, a massive island basically and it looks amazing. I mean, the textures look a bit much at this point in the video, but it looks really nice. Now I did adjust the camera code a little bit because there was some problems in the last fit clip as you saw, and it, it now looks a lot cleaner. As you can see, we're able to rotate, we're able to zoom in and out, which is something I implemented for this update. And we're basically on a giant island. Looks very nice, very, very nice. So I started implementing the ID system at this point in time because obviously objects need IDs, like a tree needs an ID. And I also made an entire XML file where all the objects would be loaded only when they're needed. Okay, so that's what I did at this point in time. And I also made animations uh, files as well. So, so you could call animations by name. And obviously every model will have different frames for how that animation will be played. So yeah, that, that's what I did in this particular update, which was pretty important for the future. With the new object model loading system done, we added a tree into the actual map, which looks really nice. At first it was halfway through the island and it turned out that it was because when we exported the object, it, its, its middle position was, half, was halfway through the model, essentially. So I had to go through and change it in Blender. And after doing that, we had some really nice positioning. You can see I also disabled the player animation at that particular time just to try and figure out what was going on. So yeah, very nice, very nice. So that concludes part one. I'll be making extra parts if there's enough interest in this video. So let me know if you're interested. And we will make a really nice game together.